Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. There's a couple of main things I want to talk about in this episode. Uh, so we're going to kick off with the first one, which is the defences for my um, for my factory. So as you can see, at the moment it's not quite working because there's all the, there's these little places around the edge where it, the attacks are coming in and the biters are gradually wearing the defences down and managing to attack the um, the, cut the turrets behind them. So in this case, it's it's the usual thing that I've talked about before, where we get the um, the big the behemoth, gre um, so that's the green um, biters coming in, and they get pressed up against the wall because they're trying to attack, and so all of the turrets focus their fire on them. But they're tough enough that they can withstand that for a, for at least a few seconds, during which time the big spitters stand off a bit further away, so the turrets ignore them, and they'll fire at the turrets, and eventually the, the Eventually they wear down the turrets and they blow up like this. And because this area is miles outside any of my um, bot areas, it it doesn't get repaired. So eventually the, the turrets get destroyed like this and, and gradually the defences start to fail and the biters can work their way up. And eventually they'll pour in and start attacking other things. Obviously I don't want that to happen. Um, but with me being on other planets a lot of the time at the moment, it's rather hard to keep an eye on these things and make sure they're defended properly. So there are two bits of advice that you normally get in Factorio for how you should try and defend your factory. The first one is, rather than defending your factory itself, so like, the, like this, I've, I've built a wall that goes around the outside of where all the mines are and all of the construction buildings and all that sort of thing. Rather than doing that, try to defend your pollution cloud instead. You see, we're getting things destroyed like this down here at the bottom. Um, so yeah, try and defend your pollution cloud instead. So everywhere where that's spreading outside your walls, your walls should be further out in order to encompass that area. Um, so up here, it's particularly bad. There's a, large, a huge area that's spread outside the walls along, um, well, along the top here. Um, there's a bit over here by these um, by these mines, and a bit down here as well, which is where all of these attack, why all these attacks are coming in. And the way the biters work is that they absorb the pollution and they turn it into biters. So if I have a look at this nest here, you can see that it says that producing a medium biter consumes 20 pollution, producing a big biter consumes 80, producing a behemoth, behemoth consumes 400. And that's why, if we watch it, you get these... The, the pollution gets out over the nests and then disappears again very quickly because it's getting absorbed by the nests. And so you get these sort of patches where the pollution is spreading out but isn't actually going but is getting held back by the nests. So there are a few things to absorb it like that. And that, I mean, yeah, it's probably a good thing because it stops it spreading out even further, but it's also a bad thing because it creates the biters that then come in and do the attacking. So yeah, so that means I want to try and get my walls further out, outside all of these pollution clouds, and that's going to be quite a big job. The second piece of advice is rather than trying to build a massive wall all the way around your base, like I've done especially along here, um, try to find um, bottlenecks to defend. So there are places where I've done that. For example, um, this new bit over here, that's a really good bottleneck. It's quite narrow and I've built some turrets across it, so that, that's quite well defended, although it does need radar. That's pretty poor. Um, that's not too bad. It's a bit long, but it's, it's okay. Um, and there are places where I've got good defences of bottlenecks in, um, but then there are also quite big places where I haven't. And so that's something I'm, I'm thinking I'd quite like to work on. But the problem is that's going to require me to obtain enormous amounts more territory in order to defend it all. So I've had a bit of a scout round using the um, using the, the satellite that allows me to do the sort of the, um, aerial view and go around and just look at the place a bit more. Um, and, the, and around the south particularly, I've managed to find a sort of a, a ring that, that gets reasonably close to a, quite a lot of lakes. So this is the start of it here. And then I can cross over down here. That's quite a bit longer, but it's also quite a long way away from any of my mines, so it's probably going to be alright, at least for now. Then we've got this big lake going across here, and then I could build across to here. And this I could probably do across like that, and then down like that. Because internal corners, like I get there, and I've got um, here, these are sort of basically okay, because as the biters come into the corners, they get attacked from two different directions. So they're quite well defended. And it's not like in Angel Bobs where I had those plasma turrets that did huge amounts of friendly fire. So these these bullet turrets aren't going to cause any splash damage to each other because they're they're very very careful about where they shoot. 
external corners like this one are much more dangerous because you get the biters coming in from this sort of direction and by the time the turrets start to fire on them you get sort of you, you get it so they get to a point where there's only one or two turrets firing and then they get a bit closer and the rest of them attack whereas if they come in from this direction by the time they're anywhere near you've got the whole range of whole wall of turrets shooting at them at the same time so straight edges are, are okay um, internal corners are fine but external corners like this are a bit of a problem um, so yeah that means going across like that would be all right then i can go across here as well and then probably across here is quite a long way but it's the best i've got that's not too bad that's obviously fine that's not too bad that's a bit long but it's basically okay and it's well outside the uh, walls uh, pollution cloud and then up here i'll have to think about separately and do a bit more exploring but um it's less it seems to be less of a problem around the top there don't seem to be as many attacks coming in for some reason the other thing that occurred to me with these um little little bottleneck areas is that then that will mean i could perhaps not have these massive long belts that have enormous quantities of ammunition on them and this, this is all just sort of wasted because it's just sitting there idly unused and so instead of that I could go back to having trains dropping it off at the uh, at the um, at each individual place. So I'd have a little station around here somewhere that would drop off supplies in general. So and then I'd have this area covered by roboports as well. So we could have stuff being repaired automatically. We could have a, a supply of spare turrets, spare walls, spare inserters even, and a relatively short belt carrying the ammunition. So there's a lot less used up there. And I could also have the trains bringing in oil. So I'd be able to then set up flame turrets as well to provide that extra bit of defensive. Um, oomph to my uh, to, to my defenses so i think that's something i want to, i want to start working towards um but it's going to be quite a big job because as i start building these these extra bits out like i built this one between episodes but then there's all of these biters inside here that i'm going to need to deal with somehow and uh, that's a lot of it, it clearing out biters just seems to be an enormous job um even with the artillery, it's still it's still a faff. Even with the nuclear rockets, it's a, it's a faff. So I'm just going to need to spend a lot of time working on that, I think, and just building up um, defensive positions around an artillery train, letting them attack everything, and then building up, and then moving it a bit closer, and and, and just repeating it again and again until I've until I've finally claimed all of the territory that I want. So that is going to take a while, but at least I can put some sort of collection system on the end, all, all of the ends of belts I've got in these places as I get round to them. Um, and just scoop up all of the ammunition that's being wasted by sitting on, just sitting on belts. So yeah, that's going to be that's one of the two big jobs that I'm working on. The second one is I um, I launched another rocket up to uh, Myokin because I wanted to finish off everything up there. Um, I did record that, uh, but I had a bit of a but uh, for some reason I didn't get the voiceover recorded. So uh, I'm going to skip over to that video now and 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 do a sort of an after the fact voiceover on it and. and um, yeah, and just talk, talk talk about what I got up to while I was doing that. Okay, so in my rocket, I've put a lot of the stuff that I'm going to need to finish off my um, my base on Myokin. There's a load of loads of solar panels, loads of accumulators because power was a horrific problem up there. Lots of drills because I want to build up um, and improve the the drilling I've got up there. I want to finish that mine off, and I'm also I've also noticed there's um, beryl deposits on there, so I want to research beryllium and get that up and running and and start producing and start producing the beryllium um, i've also packed in loads of power poles some belts and lots and lots and lots there's about 2.6 thousand of these um delivery cannon capsules i think and that's because i'm going to want be wanting to ship back enormous quantities of the um of, of the vulcanite fr from and probably the beryllium as well from miokin and so hopefully the 2600 of these capsules is going to be enough to keep that running for a while let's launch the rocket Yeah, turns out I'm not quite SpaceX at this point. I uh, haven't, haven't learnt, really learned to land my rockets properly. Um, and it was a bit of a trek away from the um, the point where I've got my base set up as well, which is a bit of a pain. So, first things first, well, well the bots are starting to pick that stuff up. Um, but let's let's tell them not to, because it's just going to be a bit of a faff. and grab some of it myself as well. Um, 
And I think the best way to get all of this back to the base is going to be to build up, get to get the robots collecting it on, dropping it into a um, in, into into a chest, and then putting it onto a belt and feeding it all down to the base, um, well, automatically. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to set up some power up here. Fortunately, I've got a lot of um, a lot of solar panels to do that with, but there's also a lot of junk on the floor, so let's clear some of that up as well. This is perhaps not the most efficient way of, um, of laying solar panels down uh, as patterns go because I'm leaving some gaps, but it's the easiest way to do it, and I do it by hand, and since I'm going to be doing this by hand for at least, well, I'm going to be doing it by hand because it's not worth trying to come up with something too particularly clever at this point. I'm just going to slap it down however it makes it feels easiest at the time. There we go, that's a bit of power. It's not quite as much as the um, as the RoboPort needs, but it's a good start. And then we can slap in some more of the um, solar panels as well. There's a lot of rocks on Miokin. It's a very um, a very boulderous planet, so there's a lot of um, clearing up to do as I do this. But yeah, we can get these down and, uh, and start the power coming in. And hopefully it'll get the, uh, get the RoboPort up and running for reasonably quickly. That should be enough to get this up and running. So now, yes, there we go. Production is um, a tiny fraction of, of what's needed. So we can dump the robots in here and then they'll start gathering everything up, putting it into the chest. And then I can reprogram the uh, stack inserter to blacklist rather than whitelist. And that means it'll unload as much, it'll unload absolutely everything except whatever I've specified. I'm going to need some um, accumulators as well because no doubt night will fall before I'm truly ready for it and, it'll, uh, and I'll lose all the power from that. I'm going to um, put another inserter on the bottom of the uh, box as well. That way I can have it... Um, Exerting onto the onto the other side of the belt, and then I can run all this all the way down. Well, again, problem with rocks. <laughs> I can run this all the way down to the base, and oh, this is a, a ridiculously long way and a ridiculously large number of rocks. But it's going to be a lot quicker and a lot easier than trying to carry it all down by hand because the the amount of stuff you can fit in a rocket compared to the amount of stuff you can fit in your own personal inventory is kind of ridiculous. Of course, I'm coming in in not quite the right place, just a bit. Um, Above the above the mine that I set up, but I mean that's it, it's almost right. It just means I need to then head across from here and go all the way over to the um, all the way over to back to the landing pad because the the landing pad is where it was meant to go. So I'm going to dump all of the stuff into into that um, and then have it unloaded from there automatically into the um, into the chest by the bots because I mean that that way it's effectively working more or less as it was intended. It's just taken a bit of a um, a bit of a detour on the way over, should we say? <laughs> Running out of belts is a pain, but fortunately there's quite a lot more of them on this belt, so I can uh, nip back up up north and uh, and grab some of them. And they're just yeah, they're conveni conveniently they're the things that came out first. I wonder if there's something alphabetized about that. Um, could be B is close to the beginning of the alphabet, but then there were some underground belts there as well, and that you'd think would be a U, so maybe not. Maybe it's just the order they happen to get picked up in. And then once you get the two belts to join up, they can then feed it all the way down there, and it'll get fed into the um, into the logistics network as it's supposed to be. And it turns out there were actually some logistics bots up here on Miokin, which um, kind of surprised me because one of the reasons I came up here myself rather than just sending the rocket uh, was because there weren't any logistics bots available so I couldn't get things moved around between the various chests. But it turns out, I think I, think I must have been looking at the wrong numbers. I think I must have been looking at the, uh, the numbers of bots in a particular RoboPort, not in the network as a whole. So, yeah, didn't did that wrong. Uh, although on the flip side it's probably a good thing I did come up here because given the rocket crashed um, there wouldn't have been anything to collect all of that stuff up or, or I'd have had to do an extremely long train of robot ports and it would have taken absolutely forever to, to get that all through. But now this all seems to be working, it's passing the stuff down the chain. Uh, let's come up here and make sure all of this is picking things up it should be and it's yeah there's loads of power so that's that's absolutely fine for the time being. Sticking a radar though, so I can keep an eye on it from a distance. And you know, let's try and be vaguely environmentally set and conscious and pick up what some of the uh, the bits of trashed rockets <laughs> lying around here, rather than just leaving them lying on the floor. So the various bits of research I can do that will allow me to make the. Uh, the rocket a bit safer and for this sort of thing to be a bit less likely to happen. Um, this isn't that one, this is rocket reusability which uh, affects how many how many of the bits you, you manage to uh, recover from a rocket when it lands on a landing pad. So in this case I wouldn't, it wouldn't be any because it missed. Uh, you can also research extra cargo rocket safety and that I think that as it says um, reduce the chance they get damaged in transit. I don't know whether that is only on a crash or whether that's just in general that you might randomly lose stuff. 
Um, but then there's also the third one, the survivability, which affects the uh, chances of the rocket exploding on the way over and just um, randomly getting lost, as we saw there. But as you can see, this one requires not only the rocket science, it also requires the blue one as well, um, which is which requires beryllium processing and lasers to get to it. Um, <laughs> so I'll get, I guess I better research those. But it also requires the this uh, blue space science as well, which is um, astro astronomic science, uh, which will no doubt be astronomically difficult. <clears throat> so yeah, there's um, a good long way to go before all of this will be ready to... Uh, before I'll be able to make much of a difference to the survivability of these things. Still, let's dump some of this junk here and we can uh, load it all in at the other end. Um, and this will get all the stuff I've got in my inventory that I think I might want to have in the in the launch pad. Sort of all transported down there for me and put in the sensible places. Oh, and um, yeah, the other reason I'm doing this is so that I can help with picking up some of the stuff and speed up the, the recovery efforts as well, because, you know, I've, I'm a little bit impatient. So we'll chuck all the stuff that should be supplying the base into the chest, and it'll find its way down there, eventually. <laughs> and the first of the items are nearly getting, have nearly made it down here. <laughs> Nearly. And this is mildly interesting because I dumped a load of stuff like assembly machines into the chest at the top. The uh, logistics robots have resupplied me with the ones that this uh, base has. But, yeah, I suppose it's useful stuff, really. Why is that insert not running? Didn't I set that to blacklist? Apparently not. There we go. At this point, I also noticed that it's um, not really going quickly enough. Let's have two of them in there, and uh, that'll be a bit, a bit quicker at unloading the belt. Not quite enough for a full belt like this, but um, I guess the reason it's a bit uh, slightly slower and awkward is because the the inserters, whilst they can pick up multiple things because they're stack inserters, they can only pick up one type of thing at a time. So they could pick up four or five or whatever it is pieces of belt, or four or five pylons, but not two of one and two of the other. Um, that said, five seems to be a slightly overkill, but yeah, who cares? It'll it's working. I won't uh, I won't knock it. And now, as you can see, as the um, as the belts and, and things are getting loaded into the chests down here, the uh, the construction bots are flying out from the um, roboports and starting to build things up for me. So we've got the belts going down over here to um, to build up the outputs from these mines, and eventually, once the solar panels start to arrive, they'll, those will get laid as well. And this uh, should just keep everything in the sort of the places where it belongs. Now, the um, the inserter here for the delivery cannon is currently working. Yeah, there we go, it's firing. I'm not sure we've really got the power for this yet, so I don't think I wanted to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do for now is tweak the uh, the numbers here and set this to only run if it's equal to a thousand. And that way, well, it won't, it won't run because there isn't, isn't a thousand of them at the other end. Um, yeah, but it's... But there's still a couple of them in the, in the cannon, and that's just going to use all of the power up. And yeah, look how slow the inserters are going now. Oh dear. Um, unfortunately, this means I now have to wait for daytime to get a bit more for the um, solar panels to charge, to get enough power to charge everything back up again. And that's going to be a, at least a couple of minutes off, because it's right in the middle of the night now, I think. And that's why there's so little power available. <sighs> I need a better way of um, telling the delivery cannon when to fire, and when not to fire rather, when not to pull power. Okay, so now we're um, all caught up with that. There's a few more things I've done. Uh, one of the ones I'm quite pleased with over here, so is, is this, this is a solution to the, um, the, the power problem I was having. So we've got this accumulator here, which charges up from the from the from the electrical network, as you, exactly as you'd expect. But it's hooked up to these t uh, these co uh, combinators, as is this uh, receiver dish. And then in these combinators, we've got if if the power A is the uh, the amount of power in the accumulator, if that's above eighty percent, then it outputs a green square. And this one, if there's less than zero um, vulcanite blocks at the other end, it outputs a green square. And the reason that's a less than zero, if we have a look at uh, back at Norvis is because I've now got this um, co combinator here that's outputting a minus 1000. Uh, and that was because I noticed that this, this cannon was firing occasionally and then that when if there was any um, vulcanite in at the other end it would stop. And then by the time that had emptied there would be a slight delay before it fired off another shell. So I wanted it to keep firing until there was a decent amount in there, like a thousand. But I can't say if this is less than a thousand then, then keep giving it the, uh, the cartridges because then if we lose power and this disconnects then 
it appears to be less than a thousand. It appears to be zero, which is less than a thousand. So it would fire when it shouldn't, when there's a power crisis, which is exactly the time you don't want it to fire. So by having a minus thousand at the other end, if this is like, I've, uh, if this is ever less than zero, then I'm telling it to fire. Um, and then I've got this one set, so if it sees two green squares, so a green square from both of them, then it knows to pass the cartridges across and the gun will fire, so we know it's all okay. Now, why is this stopped? Have we run out of water or too much steam or something? Yes, we seem to have run out of water. Okay. So I need to turn the uh, the water cannon back on. So that that tells me how long the um, <laughs> the the, 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 uh, the water does get used up relatively quickly. So I need to again go back to um, back to Norvis. Where was that other cannon? Down here? Is it? No, not down this far. Ah, oh, yes, here it is. Right. <laughs> Let's turn this back on again. Eventually, I'll put in another receiver here and get this. Um, firing just when it's uh, and, and firing only automatically and turning on and off automatically so here we go got the water coming back in again now eventually these barrels are going to be a problem because they always are um, that's half full already Let's take them put them in there so now we go that yeah we've got to again we've got the water being pumped back into here so that's Again, working, working as it should. So all these machines are working, and we've got the fuel coming out. Great. Um, right. So as I was saying, the other thing I want to do up here is start branching out and and mining some of these barrel patches. So there's one that's about almost half a million there, and another one quite ne next to it's quite big. 2.8 million. That's probably a good one to go for, especially as it's close to that massive vulcanite patch there. Um, another massive vulcanite patch. Yes, yeah, so that's that's. Oh, there's another. That's not quite as big a barrel patch. So yeah, I think this is the one to go for. So, but what I intend to do is probably keep the two parts of the base mostly separate. So I'll build up another similar setup to this over here. So I'll have the mine digging up the, the ore, and then any whatever refining needs to be done on it, and then another delivery cannon over here that launches the uh, capsules off. But for that, I'm going to need to massively expand this um, solar array because even as it is. We don't have enough power to keep constantly firing the big gun. That's why I've had to have the the accumulator next to it with a with a thing on it watching how much power is available. So um, it's not firing. At, okay, it's going to start firing again in a moment. So the power will start to get used up. I think. Yep, there we go. So because each time this fires, the amount of power in the accumulator drops a little, drops as it recharges. Uh, then it's re then it finishes charging. Yes, yeah, so you, you can see you can see the shape of the uh, the waveform here, and we are basically maxing out the uh, solar panels all of the time while while it's while the gun's firing like this, because it uses enormous amounts of power to fire the railgun back at, to lob the things back to the planet, and that means that when the night falls, we don't have remotely enough power to keep it going, so the gun stops. So now with the accumulator and the setting and the um, and the combinators off that, it stops firing. So that's okay. It does. It means the base doesn't run out of power. But it does put a stop to the uh, the delivery of the of the um, of the vulcanite. So I need a lot more solar panels up here, basically. That's, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I just need to copy and paste this more and send up another rocket that's got a lot more um, solar panels in it, and just get them all loaded up up here and ready to and ready to ready to be built out. That isn't too much of a problem. I'm not going to do the um, the barrel mine yet, but I am going to go back to Norvis and get another rocket full of solar panels coming up here and get and just get this built up so it's so it's hopefully working as it should. Um, but yes, I think that's enough for this mission, this this episode. Uh, the main thing I'm going to be working on for the next one, uh, I'll get I'll say I'll get the solar up here so this has got more power than it knows what to do with, and then after that the next thing is going to be to get the um, to get the defences around my main base working because I don't want to have to worry about the biters chewing through random chunks of my base while I'm off on a different planet concentrating on something else um, because it's it's not practical to do to, to fix things on the on the other planet because I haven't got a roboport network covering the entire thing it's just, it's just difficult so I'm going to leave so yeah I'm going to go down get those defences expanded out and a bit more a bit more wide widespread in its, in its coverage and uh, then and, and get the solar up here, and then I, and then I can come back and have another look at this.
the next thing after that, and I know I'm planning a long way in advance, <laughs> is then to probably go off to a planet like perhaps Frost or a Karura. Um, probably Frost, because that's got a 0% threat rating. And that's somewhere where I can get Cryonite, and, and Beryl as well, actually, it turns out. And that's going to be another resource that I'm going to need at some point for another one of the research paths. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But for now, I think that's everything. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.